If these guys partying in the Bahamas makes you miss pre-pandemic jet setting, well, that's kind of the point. Twelve influencers with a combined reach of more than 16 million followers. And this is their job, to bring you the highlight from the world's most exotic places. Taking a little private jet today. Right to your social feeds, with the goal of getting you to book a trip of your very own. It's time for some dolphins. And now, as the pandemic reaches this new phase of reopenings, and Americans debate when to take that first big trip, these influencers are like digital travel agents, working to restart economies decimated by the lack of travelers. From inside the U.S., to paradise abroad. I think that we make a huge impact as far as bringing tourism to all these places that need it, especially after COVID. But with the pandemic still looming, questions about variants and mask mandates are the topics of discussion heading into the summer. Fully vaccinated people can contract COVID, but I would like to emphasize that this is exceedingly rare. And the debates about vaccine passports, not to mention the inconsistent guidelines from destination to destination, are at center stage. It is confusing when the CDC comes out and says for vaccinated Americans, you know, it's safe to travel. And then the next week, the State Department says, but there's 160 countries you shouldn't travel to. While some are weary about traveling again, these influencers are hellbent on getting tourists back to the streets and the industry back on its feet safely. Being part of this industry is my responsibility to show how you can travel safely, to bring it back and to, um, you know, travel again. In the Bahamas, Jay Rich is leading his latest excursion, a content creation trip for a group of influencers he manages. It's all a part of his brainchild, Project FOMO. We're working nonstop. We all combine and we create experiences and activities, not just your typical travel photo. Jay helped create Project FOMO in the midst of the pandemic after he says the Maldives government reached out saying they needed some help. And it was a big controversy whether we should go out during COVID. Maldives called me up and said that they're really hurting in tourism. And then I said, oh, you mean the FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. And they said, yes, we're hurting down here. Can you bring up tourism? A government actually called you in order for Project FOMO to, to begin? Yes, I link up with the tourism boards. Uh, you know, I try to create uh, travel viral videos. I have a particular way to do mine. And so after a few of my videos went viral um, with the help of other travel pages, it's, it's the new modern way to bring in tourism. Creators like Jay essentially work in partnership with tourism boards both locally and abroad, depending on the level of engagement the influencer gets. That's how many followers and likes they receive. A destination will compensate the travel at certain levels or even pay them in order to post something like this. So how much can someone like yourself actually stand to make on a trip like this? On a trip like this, you could probably make like a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, the more reach or the more audience or depending on the location, the more that you can actually make. And then if you if you tap into the government, then you can get up there to the million dollar, million dollar mark. And that's when it's really nice. <laughs> Wait, you said you can make as much as a million dollars on a trip like this? Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, very much so. So not only do we bring money back into the economy, but we made a, a little bit over a million. Well, influencers have a huge impact in getting people comfortable traveling. People want to see firsthand. This is where I go. This is where I show my test. Because reading a government notice on a website of the rules is much different than seeing someone that you followed for years go through the process themselves. Influencers often get a bad rap, but in these crazy times, people want to see firsthand experiences, and frankly, that's what influencers deliver. Do you think you guys showing up for a Project FOMO trip is actually helping these economies get back on their feet? When you come out and you're able to uh, show people so many things to do, so many eyeballs and all across social media platforms, it's better than any billboard, it's better than any advertisement possible. The tourism industry is finally starting to see an uptick. But globally, it took a $935 billion hit in the past year. One of the numbers I look at to see the travel rebound is the no amount of passengers screened by the TSA. Last April, that number dropped as low as 80,000 people. That's down from 2019, which was about 2.6 million. When they stopped all flights, I was just thinking, well, how is this going to turn out? That obligation to the travel industry, a big reason why influencer Ana Linares, aka Ana New York, says she made it a point to get back on the road. Do you feel responsibility to help bring this industry back? 
I do because I've seen the struggle from the hotel industry and everyone from people in airlines that have lost their jobs. And I think that's exactly why I decided to be here because I thought it was important to show that there's a way to travel responsibly um, and someone has to do it. We followed her to Las Vegas, to the Bellagio, for a trip sponsored by the city's tourism board. They want our Instagram account of 190K followers to help show it's safe to come back to Sin City. Las Vegas was one of the hardest hit American cities in 2020. With over 42 million visitors a year pre-pandemic, they lost over $6 billion when they were forced to shut down. How do you make sure that you're not only keeping yourself safe when you're traveling, but that you're actually keeping your followers safe too? And I think having that platform allows me to just educate people on what's the reality, what not to be afraid of, how hotels are um, responsibly doing everything in their power to make sure that you are safe in your rooms, in the restaurants that you go, transportation everywhere. Experts tell us that traveling domestically may actually be the right idea this summer. Probably still overall, domestic travel is going to be safer than uh, international travel. We know that almost 40% of the U.S. population now is fully vaccinated. Our case numbers are uh, ticking down day by day. For families, especially because a lot of kids can't get the vaccine right now to be ultra safe, stay domestic, take that road trip, start planning that trip abroad next year. For Minnesota nurse Diane Schmidt, her first trip abroad since the world shut down became a cautionary tale. We went for my daughter's senior trip. We would go to Mexico and relax on the beach. Were you guys nervous at all? I was nervous, but I also had some reassurance because I was fully vaccinated. And yet, what happened when you were on that trip and you actually first started to feel ill? It was about two days into the trip and I started out with a sore throat. I had developed a cough and some sinus pressure. Two days before we were supposed to fly home, we had our scheduled COVID tests. I'd had a low-grade fever and some pretty bad body aches throughout the night. It's important to note, Diane says she was double vaccinated and had been for three months when she fell sick. So when you get that call and somebody says you have COVID, no matter if you're home or in Mexico, it's still a shock. I was the only vaccinated person in our group of six that went and ultimately the only one that tested positive. As the numbers increase of those who have been vaccinated, experts are saying the debate over whether to introduce a vaccine passport is the next step in the world fully opening up. What we know right now here in the United States is that the federal government is not necessarily actively pursuing um, a domestic version of a vaccine a passport. It may end up being the case that some countries uh, eventually require some proof of uh, vaccination against the COVID to be able to come into their country. What's your biggest concern moving forward as Americans start to feel more and more comfortable uh, traveling? The U.S. government cannot confirm if anyone actually got the vaccine. This is going to pose a challenge with international travel, fraud with vaccination cards. We are on an honor system, and an honor system when you're dealing with a deadly virus does give me pause. Regardless of the guidelines, doctors, influencers, and experts alike will tell you the same thing. Be safe and don't do anything until you're ready. So I would say go at your own pace, do your own research, make sure you, your family, and your friends are safe. If anything, the past year has taught these jet setters not just about the privilege of travel, but they say it's about truly savoring the people and places that come with it. I had to think of places that were within distance of me to go and discover and create new content. Sometimes you don't have to really go too far to discover beautiful places. Pre-pandemic, it was all about trying to hit as many destinations as possible. Now, I hope people actually savor travel and take more meaningful trips. We always talk about all the deaths and everything in COVID, but we also have to talk about how many families and people are starving now because of the lack of tourism. Do you feel like you're helping? I always feel like I'm helping. I'm a giver. I'm always, I've always been a giver, and I always will be a giver. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.